السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم اجعلنا من من يتبعك يا أرحم الراحمين اجعلنا من من يستمع القول فيتبع أحسنه يا الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا أرحم الراحمين Today's session uh, will focus on uh, the 10th outer action that uh, draws us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets us more prepared for the day when we will leave this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This outer action uh, to, uh, is following the sunnah, which means following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the sunnah is the words and the actions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, his manners, what he approved of the actions of the companions, uh, and the sunnah is considered the second Islamic legislation after the Holy Quran. In this dunya, there are two paths to take. No, no third one. So, either following the evil path, which is manifested in following the desire, following the nafs, and uh, uh, following the shaitan, uh, the temptations of this dunya. Or the second path is following the right path. The right path, this path is manifested in following Prophet Muhammad and applying his sunnah. Today, inshallah, we will focus on following the right path, following Sayyidina Muhammad and applying his sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Fatiha, Guide us to the straight path. And we know that uh, Surah Al Fatiha is called As Sab al Mathani. And it's called so because we repeat it every, in every raka'ah in our prayer. And it is seven ayahs. So it's called As Sab al Mathani. The seven ayahs that are repeated. So what do we repeat? We say, المستقيم, Guide us to the right, to the straight path, Ya Allah. Some interpreters of the Quran, uh, uh, they said that the straight path in this ayah means Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, so to guide us to follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ask, uh, we ask Allah to make us know Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we know him, we, we love him, we follow him. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, following Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah is one of the ways that guarantees the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that Allah is loving us. So in Ayah 31 of Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ 
والله غفور رحيم say او oh محمد if you should love Allah in كنتم تحبون الله سبحانه وتعالى then follow me so Allah is asking Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say if you love Allah then follow me so what's the result so Allah will love you and forgive your sins and Allah is forgiving and merciful so this is our goal in this dunya. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gaining the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and having our sins forgiven. So how can we achieve that? How can we get that? When we follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When, when we follow his sunnah. In Surah Al-Hashr, Ayah 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever the messenger has given you, take. And what he has forbidden you, refrain from. So this is a clear order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah that we have to take all that, all the orders of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have to refrain from all that he asks us to be away from. So these are the proofs from uh, by by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even in the sunnah, even in the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the narrations, they show the importance of following the sunnah. Once Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with, with his companions, and uh, he gave an advice. So, وَعَظَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَوْعِظَةً وَجِلَتْ مِنْهَا الْقُلُوبِ وَذَرَفَتْ مِنْهَا الْعُيُونِ So, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم gave us a ceremony he gave us an advice by which our hearts were filled with fear and tears came to our eyes فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّهَا مَوْعِظَةُ مُوَدِّعٍ فَأَوْصِنَا so we said O oh Messenger of Allah it is as though this is a farewell ceremony this is a farewell advice so counsel us قال أوصيكم بتقوى الله والسمع والطاعة فإنه من يعش منكم فسيرى اختلافا كثيرا so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered them when they asked, when the companions asked him, Ya Rasulullah, counsel us. He said, I counsel you to have taqwa, to have fear of Allah, and to listen and obey your leader. So, as-sama wa ta Verily, he among you who lives long, will see great controversy, which is what we are seeing in our days. So what is the advice? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ So, you must keep to my sunnah. And to the sunnah, of the khulafa, 
الخلفاء الراشدين the rightly guided caliphs عضوا عليها بالنواجز so strongly cling to it So our point of this hadith is فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ So you must keep to my sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa al-rashidin. So the Prophet وسلم, in this hadith his advice, his third advice is to observe his sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly principled, rightly guided successors, al khulafa al rashidin So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, follow my sunnah, uh, he means follow my way. And his way is how the Quran should be applied in real life. So, our class today is following the sunnah. And following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is to follow his way. And as Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, when, when she was asked about Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, she said, Kana Qur'ana yamshi ala al -ard. He was a Quran walking on earth, which means adhering to all that in the Quran. So, this is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he orders us to follow his sunnah, it means to follow his way. And his way is how the Quran should be applied in our life. So following the sunnah means that we have to first learn the Quran, read the Quran, understand the Quran. And when we do that, then it will help us in our life. It will guarantee a good life for us. So the Prophet وسلم, also ordered his companions to hold to to hold on to the sunnah. This was the the second advice. So alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al rashidin So hold on to the sunnah of the rightly principled and rightly guided uh, after him. So the Prophet asked us to follow them. Why? Because he, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, knows that there are new issues and situations that will arise. And that's why we have to seek the guidance from the people whom we know, whom, 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 who, who are known to be righteous. And those people are known to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and uh, uh, those people should be righteous and they should be following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said cling strongly to, to the sunnah. Because the sunnah is nothing but uh, adhering to the orders of the Quran. So why, why is following the sunnah important? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, in the Quran, uh, there are orders such as performing the salah, giving zakah, fasting, performing hajj, and the list goes on. But the Quran does not give any details on, let's say, for example, when to pray and how many rakahs to pray each prayer. 
it does not mention, for example, how to make up missed days of fasting or even when, when to fast them. Another example, there is no details on how to perform Hajj in the Quran. Quran says, uh, uh, perform Hajj, but it doesn't say, it doesn't mention the details and so on. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained everything mentioned in the Quran. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained and provided details for the laws found in the Quran and provided examples of the practical application of these rules, of these laws. So this was all mentioned uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. So as we said, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained the Quran. But how was that done? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Qiyamah, Ayah 17, 18, and 19. فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَ So indeed, upon us is its collection. So how would Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam collect the Qur'an in his heart? So إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ In your heart to be collected in your heart وَقُرْآنَ and to make it possible, to make possible its recitation. So, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ When we have recited it through Jibreel, then follow the recitation. ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَ Then upon us is its clarification to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collected the Qur'an in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he made Jibreel alayhi salam the, uh, the one who would teach Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the divine explanation of the Qur'an. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us as, as was sent as a mercy to mankind, to all mankind. He was sent as a savior. He was sent as a guider to guide people and take their hands to the high to, to, to the high heavens. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves his ummah. And he wants to make sure that they are all saved uh, on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, all prophets will be sitting on their pulpits, except Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu His pulpit will be, will be empty. He would keep checking on his ummah. Is there anyone? in hellfire, so he would intercede for him. This is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us. He would not sit on his pulpit until he makes sure that all his ummah is saved. So we have to obey him. We, we, we have to obey him so we will be saved on the day of judgment. We want to be under his banner on the day of judgment. We want to be of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them. عنهم عن. He is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. We want to enjoy the company of our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why it's important to follow him. It's important to follow his sunnah. 
to gain his companionship on the day of judgment. Again, uh, following the sunnah is important. And the Quran speaks about the importance of the sunnah, of following the sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 80, من يطيع الرسول فقد أطاع الله ومن تولى فما أرسلناك عليهم حفيظا He who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah من يطيع الرسول فقد أطاع الله But those who turn away we have not sent you over them as a guardian So Allah describes in this ayah that of being obedience to, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, as being part of, obedience, of being obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Also, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he warns those who disobey him. He obeys them. He, he warns them that they will be doomed on the day after. In Surah An-Nur, Ayah 63, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فليحذر الذين يخالفون عن أمره أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم. So let those beware who dissent from the Prophet's order, who disobey him. Let they they have to be aware. To be aware, so of what? Let fitna strike them. Or a painful punishment. So they will be harshly punished on the day of judgment. Also, in Surah Al Anfal, Ayah 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his slaves to respond to him and to him, to his messenger. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم. O oh, you who have believed, respond to Allah and to the messenger when he calls you to that which gives you life. When when you receive the call, then your heart will be alive. So do not get your heart to be away from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to follow his orders. We have to follow his sunnah. We have to adhere to his orders. Because following him and obeying him and obeying his orders re lead, lead to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ata'ani faqad ata'a Allah. Wa man asani faqad asa Allah. Whoever obeys me, obeys Allah. And whoever dis disobeys me, he disobeys Allah. Now we have to stop for a second. And we said that the, heart, the person should be righteous. So to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslim should be righteous. But 
What is righteousness? Righteousness is to, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is to, to always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching us. And how to gain righteousness? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here. And he pointed to his heart and he repeated it three times. At-taqwa ha huna. So righteousness is here. He reported, he pointed to his heart. So the whole righteousness is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we want to, to be righteous, we have to connect our heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there will be a transmission from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to our heart. So we can gain taqwa by connecting our heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have always to remember Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can do that through doing the things that he used to do. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are th some things that are authentic sunnah that we need to do as means of showing our love to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as means to show that we are following his sunnah. The examples of following the sunnah are countless. But I will mention a few of them. عن معاذ رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخذ بيده وقال يا معاذ والله إني لا أحبك لا تدعن في دبر كل صلاة, كل صلاة أن تقول اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك So this is one of the examples that shows the love of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Mu'az and re the result of this love. So Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu reported that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 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 the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held my hand. So he took the hand of Sayyidina Mu'az and he said to him, O Mu'az, by Allah, I love you. And I advise you not to miss supplicating after every salah, after performing every salah. You say, Allahumma a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help me remember you, expressing gratitude to, to you, and worship you in the best manner. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrik, help me to remember you. Wa shukrik, express gratitude to you. Wa husni ibadatik, and worship you, let me worship you in the best manner. So, we love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as one of the means of loving him is to do what he what he does. So he asked Mu'az to say this, and since we love Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will say after each salah that we finish, after finishing the salah, after saying assalamu alaikum twice, we will say, Allahumma a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Another example. First, we said that we love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we will do what, what he used to do. So one of the sunnahs is whenever you read Surah Al-Kawthar, to smile. Why? Anas ibn Malik radiallahu said, 
بينما ذات يوم بين أظهرنا يريد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ أغفى غفاءة ثم رفع رأسه مبتسمة So one day Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was among the Sahaba and he doozed a little bit it was a, a very short nap then he raised his head smiling so the Sahaba said to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أضحكك يا رسول الله Why are you smiling, O oh Messenger of Allah? And he said, نزلت علي آنفا سورة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر. So he said, سورة الكوثر was revealed to me, and it, it is. mentioned that he reads Surat Inna A'tainak al then he would smile and out of our love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we read Surat um, Surat al Kawthar Inna A'tainak al then we smile again there are some uh, Surahs that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Uh, let's, let's have Surah Al-Waqi'ah. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man qara'a Surah Al-Waqi'ah fi kulli laylatin lam tusibhu faqatun abada. He, whoever recites Surah Al-Waqi'ah every night, okay, every night, will never be afflicted by want, will, no, will never be uh, in need. So this is a sunnah. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do it and we follow the, the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we read Surah Al-Waqi'ah once every night. And some... some uh, Uh, people of friends of Allah they say they read it after Maghrib prayer so try not to miss also Surah Al-Mulk Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about Surah Al-Mulk هِيَ الْمَانِعَةِ هِيَ الْمُنْجِيَةِ تُنْجِيهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ so Surah Al-Mulk is the defender it is the savior it saves from the punishment of the grave. So these are some examples uh, from the uh, daily uh, sunnahs that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. Of course, we know that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, always uh, uh, encouraged Salatul Jama'ah. So if you are in the house, in your house, just pray with your wife, pray with your children. Uh, Salatul Jama'ah. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about that, Salatul Jama'ah tafdulu salat al-falbi bi 27 daraja. Praying in congregation is 27 degrees more excellent than praying by uh, someone by himself. Okay, other actions <clears throat> that are um, sunnah to, to do fasting Monday and Thursday. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast every Monday and Thursday. He, uh, when he was asked about that, he said, on Monday I was born and I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on Thursday, uh, the actions of my ummah, the deeds of my ummah are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I would like to be fasting. So when I talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, that, uh, that will be better for me. Praying also uh, the sunnahs along with the fart. So uh, since early life, children should be 
practicing praying the sunnah all uh, along with the fard. Now, we mentioned that um, following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes out of our love to him. So if we want to talk about loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, we realize that we are not giving him what he deserves. Do you know that when we send the salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we don't know how to say it. And that's why we say, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say it. We say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Ya Allah, you pray on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You send salam, wa sallim, you send salam. We don't know how to do it. We don't know how to, 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 to say what he deserves. So we ask you, Ya Allah, to do it. So, talking about loving the Prophet. Let's have some examples of the Sunnah. Look at the trunk of the tree which Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu used to lean uh, on, when, on to hear when he used to give his ceremonies, his khutbahs. When they built, when they built the pulpit for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu to stand on uh, while uh, giving the khutbah, while giving the ceremonies, the first time he used it, he was away from the trunk. What happened? They heard the trunk whining. Immediately, the trunk felt that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is not as close to him. He's away from him. So it showed the deep love it had to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم. What did Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, do when he heard the whining, the cry of the... the uh, uh, the trunk. He went down the pulpit and hugged the trunk so it stopped whining. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, told him, You will be in paradise. This is the result of true love, the companionship of the Prophet وسلم, in paradise. This is the result of true love. This is the result when we love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow his sunnah, his companionship in, in, uh, in uh, Jannah, in paradise. We have to be jealous of this trunk. We have to show our real love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by following his sunnah and by following his orders so that our result the result will be similar to that of the trunk, gaining the companionship of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the source of guidance to all mankind. And through his teachings sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, People were taken out from darkness to light. So the least we can do to, to our Prophet وسلم, is to obey him. And we have to do ourselves something good. And we have to to do something that will make Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happy. So, we sent salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are different ways to sending salawat. There are different uh, forms of sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, next week, in our next session, I will be 
mentioning several of these poems, several forms of salawat. And I will tell you the best form of salawat that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves. So inshallah, be closer inshallah next week. So as we said, the first thing we can, we, we have to do is to send salawat daily to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad says, Man salla alayya salatan sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. When you perform one, one salah, then uh, when you send one do to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pray ten, ten, ten times for you. So, if you do a hundred, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do a thousand salawat to you. Man salla alayya salatan, sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever prays for Allah's blessing upon me once, then will be blessed for it by Allah ten times. So try to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every day. Get connected to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember that the least of the most is 300. So try to do 300 times every day salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if there is a problem that you have, do the have your intention that Ya Allah, I need I need my problem to be solved with the intention of sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, and it has been proven that. Sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will make your heart feel at ease. He will take care of your problems. And your heart will be filled of the light of sending the salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, since he is the source of guidance to all mankind, since he has saved people to and took them from darkness to light. And, and since we love him, we want to get connected to him. And the way to, to get connected to him is to connect your heart to him. So when you are uh, when you are doing your your job, when you are doing your chores at home, when you are when you are doing anything, just mention Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't listen to music. Just send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't waste your time. Use it beneficially. Send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam daily. Allahumma ja'alna mimma yastami'una al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana. اللهم نلقاك وأنت راض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين. So with your love to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. For this love, Ya Allah, we love Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And when Sayyidina Adam wanted to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. He said, Ya Allah, I ask, you to, I ask you to forgive me by the sake of Muhammad. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, how do you know that I love Muhammad? He said, Ya Allah, when I looked up at your throne, I saw that his name is written along with your name. 
لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله and if he wasn't so loved to you you wouldn't accompany your name to his name so we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to guide us to truly love Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask him that out of this love he will love us فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ if you, if you follow me, then if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, then Allah will love you. This is our goal in this dunya, to be closer to you, Ya Allah. And today's outer action was following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so we ask you, Ya Allah, to, to accept us by our love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by our following to his sunnah. And until we meet next week, inshallah, we are, uh, and uh, our, I sent my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.